The Democratic Party exists for the American people. The United Democratic Party is our greatest strength. We have the right policy to stand on the side of justice. This is a moment for activism. You're never too young to stand up. We can change the world. We need you yeah. to That's be right. involved. That's it. Get out there and fight. Here we go. Here we go. And, and we're live. Live and direct, we're at Democrats Live, everybody. What an exciting day. All right. Today, we, got a, we have an awesome, awesome show for you. We have the inestimable Grace Ming, DNC member, member of Congress. Hi, everyone. And we also got Phil Kim, who's the Associate Director of Community Engagement. Give it up for Phil, everybody. And, and Vedant Patel, who is the Western Regional Press Secretary and Director of AAPI Media DNC. Give it up for Dan Vedant. Yeah. So. And you all need to remember, 43367, say it with me. 43367. Three, Text to commit. Text that number to commit, 43367. We will give you information about how you can vote this time around, because we need everybody, everybody to turn out. We turn out the vote, we win, period. Now, hey guys, we're gonna talk about the importance and the mobilization and the work and the historic wins we've seen with the Asian American Pacific Islander community in particular. Why don't you guys set the scene for me? How important is the API vote to Democrats? Well, as everyone knows, the Asian American Pacific Islander uh, community is the fastest growing community in the entire country. Mm -hmm. And we actually come on the heels of a victory, the 41st flip of a seat from, yeah. 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 from red to blue last night, Helen Tai in Pennsylvania, who right. is also a Congrats, woman of Helen. color. Yeah. Congratulations, oh. Helen. So we also know, though, that the Asian American community is not a community that we can take for granted. Right. So I'm really proud of the work that the DNC is doing uh, to do more outreach, more effective outreach uh, into these communities. Well, you know, we had a big win last night. Um, but just talk about some of the other significant wins that we've seen. Uh, that have really, that the AAPI community has been key to? Well, we've seen just a, a, an immense amount of energy following the 2016 election. In 2017, we saw a handful of first-time AAPI candidates not only run, but win in some of the most unseen places in the country. Uh, in New Jersey, we had uh, Vin Gopal win in a state Senate seat that President Trump had carried. In, Ca in Virginia, we had a handful of AAPI women uh, get elected for the first time, Kathy Tran, Kelly Fowler, right. Hala Ayala, which allowed us to get 15 delegate house pickups. Right. And in Washington state, we elected Manka Dingra to the state Senate, which flipped control of the state Senate to the Democrats. And because of that, Washington state has done some amazing things by giving uh, in their government's control to the Democrats. They've passed things when it comes to voting rights, net neutrality, they banned mm. conversion therapy, oh, uh, yeah. which one vote, one legislator, and flipping an entire chamber, this just massive consequences that are positive. So it's it's great. It's great. That is great news. Yeah. So Phil, you know, so look, the AAPI community is diverse, right? You have people, Americans all, but hailing from different parts of the world. Some are, are new Americans. Some have been in, in the United States for 14, 15 generations. Mm -hmm. And they come from different geographic areas, different languages. Could you talk a little bit about what we, what we need to know if we want to uh, let the ABI community know Democrats care. Yeah, um, you nailed it. I think the Asian community is very, very diverse. Uh, a lot of different languages. We speak Korean, we speak Chinese, Japanese, um, Tagalog. And it's interesting because when we talk about uh, doing outreach to the API community, it's getting to know and sit down with each member of the community right. and hearing like, what are the issues that resonate and where do you stand on the issues and how can we be helpful? Um, I was, you know, I got a little bit of that experience in, in Nevada, where there's a huge Filipino community sure. uh, and an East Asian community, and you know they stand on different sides of the issues. But if you spend time talking to them and making sure that they know you care, they'll be loyal and they'll come out and vote for the right people because they care about that quality time. Well, you know, I tell you, I'm a born and raised in the city of Detroit. I'm honored to represent Minneapolis now and in, in the suburbs around it. But uh, I'm from Detroit originally, and one thing that was burned into my memory as a kid 
is what happened to Vincent Chen. Mm. Now, I don't know, you guys are kind of young, so you may or may not know about Vincent Chen, but I can tell you, Vincent Chen was just a regular dude. He was having a beer at a bar. And some other guys uh, started saying, oh, you're, 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 a, you're a Japanese. He wasn't Japanese. He was American, but he was actually of Chinese descent. And you, you, you are the one who has taken our jobs. Because this is when Japanese autos were making encroachments into the U.S. auto market. And these guys chased Vincent Chin, and they beat Vincent Chin to death. And um, that, I'll never forget that time, because it burned into my mind that, uh, you know, uh, you know the, the Asian community does and has historically faced some horrible prejudice. Um, and uh, I mean, I don't know if you want to talk about that a little bit, about what the struggles that the community faces. This is why it's important for Asian Americans to truly understand and to feel that the Democratic Party uh, is on their side mm -hmm. and shares the same values. Keith, you're right, you know, this is a community who, uh, uh, after building the railroad, uh, Chinese Americans were then later uh, prevented from becoming citizens and yeah. even excluded for this, from this country by laws passed by our very own Congress. The Chinese Exclusion uh, Act. Yeah, and mm. there were Japanese Americans Americans who literally uh, were incarcerated uh, in camps uh, because of the way that they looked or the, the perception of being a foreigner, that they were a threat to this country. And these are citizens of the United exactly. States. Exactly. And then some of them went on to serve with great distinction in World War II. Exactly. Yeah. So, you know, access to, to fairness and to justice and equal opportunity, these are the democratic values that we truly share with the API community. That's right. That's right. There's also, I remember a few years ago, this was probably within the memory of folks around here, when a lot of Chinese American scientists were sort of being accused when Ho Lee comes to mind. Uh, so, I mean, this issue of, 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 of equal justice for all is as resonant with the a Asian community as it is with any, any other American. It's very important. What are the things that you're hearing from the API community that we better know about? What are, what are the issues that people are facing? I know these days uh, we're talking a lot about immigration. What are some of the other things that we need to be thinking about? Well, I think healthcare is still a big one. Yeah. Uh, we, uh, one of the things that I hear about recently is mental health in the Asian American community. Sure. It's not talked about enough, it's stigmatized. Um, and it's so important to be able to have these open conversations so people know that it's okay to be talking about this, um, that they're, you know, you're not in the struggle alone. Uh, but also having access to healthcare to then pay for services which are expensive is important as well. So that's something that I've been hearing pretty often recently. Yeah, what about, yeah, that's right, that's yeah. right. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> what about mobilizing the vote on the ground? What about going, mm -hmm. so like in Minneapolis, we have a very, we have a very diverse Asian American community, but the, but the biggest number, is the Hmong community. Yeah. And we've been proud to see uh, people like Mimua, Sai Tao, and, uh, and, and Dai Tao, and many others be elected to office. You know, the Hmong community uh, has a very powerful presence in Minnesota politics. But that's because they went to the Hmong voter and, got, and mobilized people. Talk to me about mobilizing the, a the API electorate, the folks. I think for us, a lot of that starts with meeting folks and meeting communities, you know, where they're at. And so one of the ways that we've been doing that here at the DNC is that at least in the comms and media spaces, as it relates to the information that we're getting out to the electorate, of course, you know, we're doing it in English and we're doing it to the mainstream newspapers and stuff, but we also need to make sure that we're doing it in places like Tsingtao Daily and India Abroad right, right, and the right, Epoch Times and the Hindustan Times and all those media outlets that our parents and grandparents still rely on as their daily source of, of information. And, and so we've done a really good job of that. In 2017 alone, we worked very closely with a lot of the coordinated campaigns happening, making sure that they were interfacing with these API outlets in the right way and making sure, whether it be Virginia or New Jersey or Washington, that these API outlets had a seat at the table and were communicated to and the messages that these campaigns were putting out were getting to these voters. Well, you know, uh, when we were working on uh, Georgia 6, early on, right. right after 45 got elected, Georgia 6 was one of the first big races, and, jo and Grace, you spent a lot of time down there, and you rem I remember you telling us 
that there's some folks who said, look, no, but no Democrats have ever even come to talk to us. You yeah. want to talk about that? I, I was really encouraged by uh, the time I spent in Georgia. This was for the John Ossoff campaign. And obviously, we lost the election. But the DNC invested in unprecedented ways, diverse field organizers to go into various communities, African American, Hispanic, and Asian American communities. Uh, at the time, I had met an uh, African American elderly woman who said she'd voted Democrat her entire life but that no one ever knocked on her door or, or called her. Um, we were able to meet with organizers who met people at the door who had been American citizens uh, for decades, but have never cast a vote yet. And so these were really exciting uh, examples of just basic groundwork uh, that the DNC uh, is trying to do better in terms of having more effective outreach uh, to these communities. Yeah, yeah, that's what we really, really have to do. You know, sometimes it feels to me like we do focus on the election too much. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and people, we come around when there's what? An election. And they don't see us again until when there's what? An election. An election. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and so, so people might get, get, get the idea that all we really care about is the election. election. But, but that's really not the case. The truth is we care about their lives and their families. We care about them being treated fairly, e equally. We care about education, employment, and health care but it is through the election that we can get in power to ensure those things. But we got to do a better job of campaigning early. What do you all think about that, getting out there earlier? Absolutely. I mean, we need to be out there 365 days a year. That's right. You know, there's, there shouldn't be any more off days. And especially, right. you know, in, in, in 2016, we saw, you know, when you engage and mobilize the AAPI community in certain states, Nevada, Southern California, Pennsylvania, what have you, you know, it really can move the needle electorally. But in order to keep doing that, we have to keep at it. And we can't just, you know, start going out there in October and going to, and you know, and just show up in May and then February for Lunar New Year. We need to be there every single month, every <laughs> single day, you know? It's API Heritage Month and it's great. And in DC, there's a lot of, you know, API energy this week, but it needs to be more than May. You know, every month should be API Heritage Month because That's there's right. API families everywhere. Right. Now, you know, Phil, earlier you were talking about how part of your portfolio is also dealing with youth. Mm. It, as, as Democrats think about how we talk to and engage API communities, do we need to think about how we deal with young people in a, in a way different than folks who might be older? Yeah, I think when I think about the youth, the person that comes to mind is they're leading the way. We need to get out of the way. Right. We need to follow and They're support. leading the way. Yes, 100%. Right. Um, wh when it comes to being intersectional, API youth, like when I think about some of the new stuff we're trying to do to meet people where they are. Um, you know, uh, one thing that we've done recently is you know, join podcasts that are speaking to our generation sure. of AAPIs. Um, being on digital presence is more. Um, and being, pre I think that's the biggest thing actually, being present in communities when people know that you're around is super, super important. Um, present. And I think that's what we do here at the new DNC. We don't, we don't take, there's no off years, right? We're here every single day. Well, you know, man, I just want to say you're absolutely right. <laughs> Presence yeah. is so critically important. You can send a mailer or you can even do a TV ad, but what if we just were present in the lives of the people who we say we want to represent? What about that for a concept? Right. Being right. there, yeah. you know? You know? Seriously, it, it's, so, it's so important to just be there, and that means not just, certainly come to the, to the events, but that regular presence. And you know, I, I feel like for young people today, as, as a guy who's 54 years old, this generation has challenges that my generation simply did not have. When I got out of law school, there was a job there. I got married, you know, because I wanted to. You know, uh, I didn't have to worry about can I feed my family. I, I knew I could. Uh, I didn't have massive debt on my back. In fact, I got through college, a grad degree, and law school with, with basically $12,000 debt total. Wow. Kids picked that up a semester. Um, and you know, many, in many ways, young people today are facing, I mean, there, there was no school shootings when I was a kid. Mm -hmm. Kids gotta worry about school shootings now. Mm -hmm. I mean, what, I think it's important to always reinforce the challenges young people are facing. I was talking to some DACA kids. I didn't go to school with kids who thought they might be snatched out of the country at any moment by the government. So you guys wanna talk about the challenges our young people are facing these days? Well, I mean, that's pretty powerful hearing, about, hearing all that. Um, but, but it's real though, isn't it? It's so real. And I think I've, 
I've had the good fortune to work with leaders in CDA and high school Dems. Um, CDA is? Sorry, I'm sorry. College Democrats of America, High School Democrats of America, and Young Dems of America, YDA. So we, we work closely with all three of those. Yeah, man. Um, and something that I've kind of internally learned is that leaders are leaders and who happen to be young, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's, that's kind of the way yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That's yeah. a great way to put it. Yeah. And so when I think about when I was growing up as a kid, like they... I didn't have to deal with half of the stuff that they think about now, and they're showing me the way that I'm just trying to make sure that I can support them. Um, one Climate change, whatever. You said one person? Yeah, well, for example, uh, one person I think about often, her name is uh, Cheska Perez. Mm -hmm. uh, we met in Nevada. She, uh, her, she was basically a student full-time at UNL. Uh, she was a student in high school, uh, finding scholarships to help pay for food for her family. Uh, was a DACA recipient eventually, but she was undocumented, and so she couldn't go to college because it was too expensive. So she worked the Hillary campaign to, to make an income, and after two years of working, uh, she was able to get a scholarship to go full ride to Franklin Marshall in Pennsylvania. Like, that's the kind of person I think about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's leading the way. Right. Um, and that's powerful to me. But, but if we made college more affordable, we could get a whole lot more people besides just Jessica Perez yeah. and give them a chance. So, look, it might be time for a good trouble segment. What do you think? Is it, Kat, what do you think? Is it time for it, Kat? Hey, you guys. I want you to know about a superstar out there. Manga Dinga did some awesome stuff. Vinan already talked about it a little bit. Let me, let me turn you on to Manga Dinga, you guys. Now. When you see something that is not right, not fair, not just, get to stand up and find a way and to get in trouble, good trouble, necessary trouble. My name is Manka Dhingra. I'm the state senator from the 45th legislative district in the state of Washington. This, was, this race was so important because our Senate was controlled by the Republicans by one seat. We have the House that's controlled by the Democrats, we have a governor that's a Democrat, and it was this one seat. And because of this one seat, for the last five years, we've had gridlock in Olympia. And so this one vote actually changed what we did this session. We passed the Voting Rights Act, we did automatic voter registration, we did reproductive parity, we did equal pay, in addition to so many more other great bills. I mean, it really showed what we talk about, values that all Americans get can get behind. And so if your voice is not at the table, really your issues are not being heard. We can no longer wait to be invited to take a seat. We have to open that door and seat ourselves down at that table. And make sure we leave that door open so others can follow. So for all you folks out there watching, I just want to let you know you, the world doesn't know Manga Dinka. The, 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 they know her in, in Washington, but the whole country doesn't yet know her. I got a feeling that they're going to. But there are stars out there that are leading the way. Don't ever sit back and say, when's the next great Kennedy coming? Or when's the next Obama? No, 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 no. They might be sitting next to you in a city council or state legislature right near you. So, you know, that's right. awesome. That's right. So, uh, Heather, we got time for a few questions? also have some questions from our social media audience. So we'll start with one question from Katie on Twitter, who says, what is the DNC doing to bring in fresh insight, and how will they include progressives left of the establishment? OK, good question. You guys want to take that one? Well, then I will. It's been doing, <laughs> you've been doing amazing work in right. that area. <laughs> well, here's the thing. we got to reach out to people. we got to talk to people. we got to listen to people. And that means that the Democratic Party, the DNC, has to sit down with our revolution, sit down with Indivisible, Flippable, has to sit down with Black Lives Matter, has to sit down with uh, the, young, the young people who are fighting out here in the most energetic parts of our community. And then, you know, we need to in involve folks and w welcome them in. And when we do that, they'll bring their own ideas in. And what used to seem like some sort of a, a lefty crazy idea or some out there idea may become an idea that we all agree on, like the weekend, <laughs> you know? <laughs> you know, the weekend used to be a wild, crazy idea, right? Oh, you mean two days when people don't have to do exactly what their boss says? 
Uh, <laughs> you know, yeah. <laughs> you know, so I mean, the the fact is, is that when folks come in, they actually learn that the Democratic Party is just a gathering and a collection of people who have shared values. So that's what we're doing. Next question. Sure. Hi, and thank you all for um, having this tonight. This is a really exciting time, and congratulations to all of you all for the amazing things that you're doing. Uh, I have one question I think uh, a lot of people would really be interested in knowing. When it comes to like organizing in communities of color, yeah. can you kind of like share some of the things that you know the party has been doing to kind of increase the activity and productivity and I guess just the reassurance for those communities? Yeah. How are you re-engaging communities of color? Yeah, uh, that's great. So I think uh, when organizing in communities of color, you got to look like the people that you're organizing, mm -hmm. representative. Um, and so, yeah. <laughs> the, the new DNC is serious about that. They put money towards investing in organizers who will talk to people who look like them, which is great. Um, one avenue that we're pursuing from the AAPI side too is uh, the AAPI state caucuses. It's an, it's an infrastructure that exists and then we're trying to leverage that so they can talk to their friends, their families, their networks um, and build them up while also continuing to talk to our communities and make sure they feel the love from us. Excellent. Yeah. Great, great, I think great. if I could yeah, piggyback please. a little bit off that, I think Vedant and Phil have said this in variations tonight very accurately. Uh, it's, it's about authentic relationships. It's sure. not just what you do for people, as Maya Angelou said. It's how you make people feel. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. so showing up not just right before the elections, but really showing up where people are, at, at bakeries, at supermarkets, at community and, and local organization meetings, uh, and really being able to work, and Vedant's done a great job in communications and media. Uh, many of these communities aren't necessarily watching or reading mainstream media, sure. um, but like the, the media outlets that we've been reaching out to in unprecedented ways in their own language, uh, not just right before election telling them to vote, but year round so that they know we're working on issues that uh, affect their communities. Absolutely. And to piggyback back onto that, you know, I think part of it also as it relates to, you know, communities of color and especially in the AAPI community is uh, this notion of cultural competency and having respect. Mm -hmm. um, you know, both Governor Northam and Governor Murphy respectively in their own campaigns, not just like showed up to AAPI events and stuff like that. They had very robust earn media rollouts as it related to certain AAPI events and activities that were happening in their respective states. Sure. Now, that's unheard of, I, I think, you know, in, in, in some of these states. They've probably never seen something like that before. And just so having that foresight and having people on your staff and working with committees like the DNC to be proactive about things that are coming down the pipe uh, as it relates to communities of color is just so critical. Well, yeah, there you got it. And we probably got a lot more ideas. You know, that question was asked by a superstar around here named Joaquinia. <laughs> <laughs> and, 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 and she has been instrumental in reaching out to not just African-American women, but all kinds of communities that uh, historically, you know, we just right. sort of took for granted. Right. We're not taking people for granted no more. Uh, we got one more, quote, one more. Sure, talk, I do think question. we have time for one more question if anyone else in the audience has a question. We also have a question from Mark on Facebook who just says, how are you going to make college more affordable? Well, exactly, that's the issue. Let me just say, I just mentioned my own college experience. I have four kids, and I could tell you that uh, it's gone up in price. <laughs> 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 but, 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 but let me just say this, let me just say this. Well, if you, if you look at the numbers, state legislatures have seen uh, their appropriations to state colleges fall off the table. Uh, and why? Well, because you know, you've had this anti-tax movement where these folks who don't want to pay any taxes, yet they want, you know, roads that you can drive over and water you can drink. And, and as we've cut, as we've gotten anti-tax and we've seen tax, you know, rich people get richer, working classes get stagnant. And uh, how are we going to do it? We're going to mobilize, we're going to organize, and we're going to pass debt-free college. Mm -hmm. But you got to, but you, that's right. The how of it is mobilization and engagement. That's the how. And that means relationship building, and that means what you guys are doing all the time. Hey, look, on behalf of the DNC, our awesome chair, Tom Perez, DNC sister of mine, Grace Ming, let me say thank you. Phil, 
<laughs> You've been, you're doing a great job out there, Phil Kim and Vedant Patel. You're doing an awesome job, too. Hey, check, in out, check out Democrats Live next week because we're going to have the NS. I keep on trying to say that word, and I can't say it right, so I'm just going to skip it. <laughs> we're going to have, we're gonna have uh, Jason Kander, who has been leading a tremendous effort at getting out the vote, protecting the vote, fighting for the vote. He's going to be on here with... Uh, Amanda Brown Learman, my friend and the head of our political department, they'll be on Dems Live. You check in too. Don't forget to text the word commit, two M's, one T, to 43367, 43367. This has been another edition of Dems Live. We'll see you next time. <laughs>